Hi everyone, I'm Kyla and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about toddler essentials because I'm a mom of two boys, uh, two years old and one year old. This one is my oldest boy, he's two years old. Say hello. Hi. <laughs> Okay, so first up on my list, we're going to talk about the Baby Milk Espresso Maker. So, it sounds a little bit extra and very unnecessary, but to me, personally, when I first started uh, with my first child, he was fussing non-stop whenever he got hungry. And honestly, this applies to everyone, myself included. You know, when you get hungry, you get very, very grumpy. So, uh, what more can you expect from a child, right? So, I, I found it very uh, troublesome to prepare a bottle of milk, especially because I don't have those uh, preheated, um, what do you call it, water boiler kettle thing. So every time I want to make a bottle, I have to boil water. So in the long run, like after a few weeks, it just got too tiring and I just couldn't keep up with it. So I decided to try out the Baby Milk Espresso Maker and it is honestly a life changer and I would recommend it to anyone, yes baby, anyone who has kids. And even, you know, if you are thinking of a, a gift to give to your friend, this would make an excellent gift. And I have given this to people before because that's how much I, you know, I think it's worth the money. It is honestly the most used machine in my entire household. Um, yeah, so all, it, all you need to do is just press a button and select how much milk you want. You, okay, prior to that, you have to key in, you know, the formulas and everything, but that will come with the manual. Uh, and then the machine would calibrate the amount of powder needed for X amount of milk. So all you need to do is key in however many ml uh, of milk you want, and then the machine would just... It's a coffee machine for babies, basically. So I don't really have to explain that. Um, but yeah, so it's very easy. And in terms of like cleaning, I just need to clean, clean the funnel every day and then just do a, a thorough cleanse uh, every couple of days. Uh, which is also just the touch of a button just to really like clean out the machine so maintenance wise it's a perfect i've been using this for two years and i have no complaints at all it yeah it is honestly one of the best investments i would say and especially for me because i have two and thankfully now they both drink the same formula which is great because one of the issues is that the container can only fill um one brand of milk so for example earlier when um, my younger one was drinking the infant formula and the second older one was drinking the uh, one year old and above. Uh, that was a little bit troublesome but the machine can also dispense um, uh, water at the appropriate temperature. For example, if you want water at 40 degrees. So all you need to do is just select your, your temperature, the amount and then just pour in, manually pour in your milk. That is if you have two children who are not using the same formula. But in my case, both of them are now thankfully using the same formula. So it is a dream because, um, you know, I, it's just so much easier. Eight seconds and I get a bottle of milk. So that is that. Okay, so next up, I'm going to be talking about eating essentials like the suction bowls and bye -bye. the utensils. Bye -bye. Yes, bye -bye. Bye -bye. So these suction bowls are really aesthetic looking, which is great because I cannot stand the bright blue or bright pink ones. Uh, they bother me to death every time I look at them. So I found these which are pretty to look at and useful at the same time. Um, they are good because you know you can just really uh, adhere the base to your table and the baby would not be able to flip the bowl over, which is awesome. And then you have these feeding utensils which are short. For their little hands to hold and it's a lot easier for them to eat and to you know find their mouth uh previously my older son was using the regular spoon and then i just realized he just could not get it into his mouth because the handle was so long so these really helped him but they i find like this the spoon wise it's not really ideal in terms of like uh getting as much food in so this is good for them to just learn how to eat on their own Okay, so on that note of eating, I'm going to be talking about high chairs next. So, uh, my doctor actually recommended us to get the high chair as soon as they could sit. So that, you know, it established good habits that like they have like breakfast, lunch, dinner time. And they know like, you know, eating time is for eating. So, um, that is one of the things that we got. So, for us, yes, we did look at, you know, all the commercial brands and everything. But we found the cutest little French looking uh, baby high chair that was actually from Antoinette. It's a restaurant that closed down in Singapore. So thankfully, we actually managed to find one. Um, unfortunately, I've been searching high and low and still not able to find it. Uh, find another one for my other boy. 
Um, the condition of it was quite bad, to be honest. Like, there were stains everywhere, so we had to send the whole thing down and repainted it. Um, and now it's it's perfect, and it's so cute because it just matches my house aesthetic, uh, which is awesome. So, yes, uh, one of the things to get uh, would be a high chair, depending on you, if you want to find one that would match your house, or if you want to find one of those um, that you can just get at a store. It is a good thing to get for your baby, especially as they grow older, it's good for them to, you know, know that like, um, eating time is for eating. So, another type of chair that we got would be like a booster or floor bumper seat. So, that one, we actually, it comes with an attachment for younger children. So, as soon as they get older and they can, they are more stable, you just remove the attachment and then um, it works for them as well. So this one is you just place it on the floor or you can even attach it to your chairs, your dining chairs if you want to turn that into a high chair. So it's like a two-in-one in a way. Yeah, so yeah, booster seat, yeah. Yeah, fine, booster seat. So it's a two-in-one um, chair that would help if let's say, you know, you have not much space in the house and you want something that is sort of dual purpose, you know, you can put them on the floor and they can sit by themselves or if you want to put them on the higher chair where you guys have dinner and everything or lunch or whatever so uh, that is also a very good investment so I actually got two of that because you know now um, for that one it's not, not, nothing special or anything it's just a regular chair that you can get from the store mine I believe is from Bumble um, it's less than a hundred dollars so it's a, another good investment I feel if you are looking for a chair for your baby and you're not sure what to get Okay, next up would be about um, going out. So when you go out, what do you need? You need a stroller. So depending on your lifestyle, if you want something that's slight, portable, if you travel a lot, uh, you need a travel stroller. If you want something more for comfort, then of course get something with better suspension and everything. Uh, something that has good um, storage support. Uh, if you want something compact and uh, easy that you can just put in and out of the car, then you get one that is small and slim. You can you can maybe think about the Bugaboo N that is really tiny. Or yeah? Yes. Okay, so uh where was I? So for us we got the Bugaboo B5, I believe. So this was when we only had Cole one. So now the Elfie is my second one. Now that he's getting older and everything, uh he's outgrowing the Duna that we used to use for him. So right now he's actually using the current stroller that we have. So at first, we were thinking, should we get another stroller that can have um, that has like a dual seat, so those twin prems, but we realized that they don't really sit in it all that much. So usually they take turns, or no one is sitting in it at all. So what we decided to do is that um, my mom actually found this uh, what do you call it? It's like a buggy board extension that you just need to attach to your stroller, your regular stroller. So your older child can actually just stand behind it whenever you go out and your younger one can be uh, in the seat, depending on whoever wants to sit where. Okay, so last but not least would be uh, safety essentials. So one of the first things that we got would be the gate, you know, the safety gate. So we got that for the kitchen and the gym for our place because those are the two most dangerous areas in the house and we don't want them, you know, walking into there when something is cooking on the, on the, the, the cooker or going to the gym and playing with the weights and everything. So that is something that we got and you want to get something that you can actually maneuver with one hand. You don't want to you don't want to have like a Fort Knox kind of gate whereby you are struggling yourself to open. So there are times, you know, that you have to rush into the kitchen to get something real quick. So you are carrying your toddler in one hand. You would actually ideally find something that you can actually open with one hand. Uh, if you get those that you have to release a catch here and there and everywhere, I'm sure you yourself would find, find it too bothersome to open it and you would just get lazy to lock it basically, making, rendering the entire gate uh, redundant. So do your research, find something that is uh, easy enough for you to handle. Okay, so uh, apart from that would be safety cabinet locks. Uh, this is important especially if you have uh, cleaning solutions and whatever that could be dangerous like scissors and knives and all of that. So we just put the locks for those cabinets specifically so that we know that uh, they are safe if, let's say, we were to leave them in the living room, they would not go and start opening all these cabinets. Uh, another thing would be these little, uh, what do you call it, door stoppers 
For our place, most of our doors are actually sliding. No, actually all of our doors are sliding doors except for one door which is the baby room which pisses me off to be honest because I don't know why I didn't think of this um, the most important door I have in the house that the babies would use the most is the most dangerous door, essentially. So we actually got this to wedge in between the hinge where um, the likelihood of their little tiny fingers getting jammed is the highest. So we actually use this and we just slot it into the door. Um, that is all we can do for now until we decide to get rid of this door entirely. Honestly, I feel like just getting rid of the door entirely because it just causes me too much anxiety uh, worrying about their fingers getting uh, caught in between. Uh, another thing would be if you have uh, sharp edges around your house like your furniture. So for us, our coffee table is actually quite low. It's not sharp or anything in terms of like, the edges, but it's uh, made of metal. So we're especially, especially when they were learning how to walk, and the, the tendency of them falling is a lot higher. We had to get it protected, so we just got this rubber thing to place around the table. It's really easy to install. It's, I think, just uh, tape or something like that. Um, but yeah, with time, the kids will start pulling on it. It'll, it'll come loose and you just have to just uh, reattach the, the, rubber, the rubber padding. So that's pretty straightforward in terms of safety-wise. Um, I don't really have anything else that I would say has really changed my life. Oh yes, I got a bed guard as well. So this one I was super hesitant to get initially because I'm very particular about the, the aesthetic of my place and everything. But um, my mom insisted on it and okay fine, I'll give her credit when credit is due and I give her 100% credit for this because um, now especially if I'm ever alone or whatever and I need a safe place to put them, I actually can just put them on my bed and because my, my kids sleep with me, um, having this bed guard has been a real stress reliever for me personally. So depending if your kids sleep with you or not, um, whether you find it necessary, if your kids don't even go on your bed at all, then you know, don't bother with this. But if your kids are on the bed with you most of the time, then this is definitely something that you should consider. It's a little bit pricey to be honest. It's I think like 200 or 300 dollars just for this bed guard thing. That just makes your place look horrendous. But it definitely saves you a lot of stress uh, because uh, it's a lot safer for them and it's like a giant playpen in a way um, where we know that it's safe for them to play around and we don't have to worry because if like at night they are sleeping in our room yes if they are sleeping in our room and everything yes baby okay so I guess that's done I, I will see you in the next video and thank you for watching if you like this video don't forget to like and subscribe bye 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 bye